everyone and welcome to today's video. Now today I'll be talking about VCT America's kickoff for the group stage results. So just like in EMEA in Pacific and soon to be China, I'm just going to be talking about group stages. I'm not going to be talking about play-ins and playoffs. That's going to be in a different video. Um, and I'll also be posting my play-ins and my playoff predictions as well on the YouTube community page. So you can have so you can have a look on my YouTube community page so you can see on who I think is going to win those matches. But, but before we get into the group stage results, let's first talk about the teams that competed in VCT America. We have Loud, NRG, EG, Clown9, Leviathan, Furia, Sentinels, Hunter Thieves, MIBR, and Crew, and G2 Esports, or the basically the whole Magad roster um, came up from Ascension. And the players as well, you might know them, you might not know them, it doesn't really matter, but those are all the players in the partnership. Group stage now, we're first start off with Group A, and then we'll work our way through. NRG vs Furio, I was not surprised about this whatsoever. NRG with a pretty convincing 2-0 victory against Furio Esports, token 10 on Breeze, token 8 on Sent, and it was Ethan getting MVP. Not really surprising there. Furio, they, uh, like, Furio did surprise me of how poorly they were. I mean, yes, they lost to Global Esports in Convergence, but I thought it was just going to be just a one-off. Like, I thought they were going to poop. No, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't whatsoever. And NW, like, NW0 is still crazy, but still just kind of struggled i think havoc also struggled as well especially on breeze and then he picked up on a scent but still it just wasn't enough of furia cloud nine they beat out mibr 2-1 actually mibr made this very very competitive i think also said as one of my predictions video that i generally think i'm like i am i feel like i am underrated mibr heavily because by looking at their roster again and how well then actually they actually performed pretty decently last year and actually they only got two wins i was like okay MIBL could actually be pretty good, and they actually were. Very competitive here against Clown9. 13 on Bind to Clown9, 13 8 on Split for MIBL, and 13 10 on Lotus for Clown9, and it was Oxy getting the MVP, and also the first ace as well for VCT America. The winner's match, obviously, it was the America's NRG versus Clown9, and it was a I mean, it was a really competitive though. 2 0 victory for NRG, 13 7 on Sunset, and 14 12 on Ascend. A lot more Yoru being used, especially on Cloud Knight. NRG, they're kind of like a much more like. I don't know what. They're much more structured. They don't really want to come out with these crazy, wacky ideas. They want to play by the book. So, obviously, expect a bit of some boring comps from NRG. Expect a lot of weird comps from everyone else, basically. So, NRG, they kind of just want to just play their. Play by the book. I mean, the coach is shit. What else do you expect? Play by the book and stuff. So it makes sense. But it's interesting that they did still use the Yoru push. So they actually used Yoru against MIBR and actually went pretty well. And Demon won once again, again, again MVP. And actually dedicated this as well to his now fiance, Katarina, which is pretty cool. Uh, Zekin's girlfriend. Uh, Zekin's girlfriend? No. Zekin's sister, if you're wondering. Anyways, next up is now the battle of the Brazilian teams, Furia versus MIBR. And this was basically where I thought MIBR actually had a really good chance on making it to play and they played especially artisan as the mvp played exceptionally well and i also have a lot of high hopes for rgl oh basically all oh, ba basically the controller player rgl meister i have so much high hopes for him because i've seen him play and he's just a phenomenal phenomenal player and he also did really really really, really well here uh, 39 on split 13 11 on breeze and once again like i said it was artisan and mvp and the decided match it was a 2-0 victory for mibr against cloud nine I mean, Cloud9, they just looked different. Like, they, they I, I don't know if it was because of confidence or they just didn't play well, but I, this is just not really the Cloud9 I was really expecting. Yes, it was very close, so 14 12, I'll give them that. 39, they made a quite a few mistakes, though, in my opinion. But either, either way, uh, Cloud9, they were knocked out, and RGLM got MVP, and, and MIBL moves now to the play-ins to possibly somehow get into a playoff spot in Masters Madrid. I never thought I would ever say MIBL will be going to Masters Madrid. Possibly. Now the group of death, group B, and it was Loud versus Sentinels to start off the group and it was a 2-0 victory for Loud against Sentinels. 11 on split, 39 on ascent. It was interesting as well that QCK or quick, how, how I like to say, because that's actually how you say it's quick. Um, it was on Phoenix on ascent. Which really surprised me, but it actually worked. And Quick, he had a phenomenal game. I'll be honest, this entire game, well, I should say this match that against Sentinels was much, much better than he when 
when he was with Furia. I'm just gonna say that outright. He looked so much better now with this much more structured team with Sardak as the IGL, who I who I rate really, really highly. So having a great IGL of Sardak and having some great support players like Kalzine, like Les, like Tuzzy in the lineup with you as well, absolutely phenomenal. So I'm really, really happy that a quick can actually now show his presence and show his skill as well, other than them just being outshined by MW0 the entire time. Love your time versus 100 Thieves, and I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting from 100 Thieves, so I mean, for them to go on 13 on Icebox is pretty impressive. 39 on buying for Leviathan, 33 on split there for 100 Thieves, so they absolutely destroy Leviathan and Icebox, like I mentioned before, 13 11. It was Aspas getting MVP, and yes, he did whip out the Rainer. It was a little bit Harbor Viper that uh, allowed Maiden famous. Um, 100 Thieves, I mean, they just love using Gecko, and I think Arsenal was on Gecko as well, which really confused me. Cryosels is also now switch over to controller. So they're kind of like doing what like EG did with Demon 1 of just having their duelist player as controller. So that, I mean, it went pretty well. I mean, he was popping off on Brim and Astro, so it makes sense, but it just didn't really work out to their advantage though. Winner's match, it was Loud versus Leviathan. It was Loud winning against Leviathan. So Aspas won't be winning it against their former org. They won against their former player. 11 on buy though for Levitana, 1310 on split, 37 on ascent for loud. It was less gain MVP. Once again, Phoenix being used on buy and ascent, which kind of surprised me here. The elimination match, the match that everyone was watching, Sentinels versus 100 Thieves. It was a 2 1 victory for Sentinels against 100 Thieves. 13 5 on Lotus with some chamber, pretty sure that's by Cryocells. And once again, Yoru was being used, but mainly on buy things to 10. He's now on the Omen, which actually he's been pretty good on Omen, so. I'm excited about that. And for the deciding match, it was Sentinels as well getting the win. Also, also, also Zach got MVP as well. But it was Sentinels who won against Leviathan. 2-1 victory for them to advance themselves into the play. And Leviathan to be knocked out. 13-3 on split for Sentinels. 13-6 on Breeze for Leviathan. And 39 on Bind for Sentinels. And Zach can once again get an MVP. They used the Harbor Viper combo like they did on Bind. Um, it was just, I mean, they were just going back and forth, back and forth. There was some misplay a bit, I'll be honest, when Zelsis, John QT baited a bit, but other than that, I mean, it was still a great match, so really happy for Sentinels to get into the play and could they possibly make it to an international event? Last time, ignoring Lockin was in Champions 2021 in Berlin. That's how long it was, but if we talk about Masters, that was in Masters Berlin 2021. So it's been pretty long since Sentinels was in a Masters event or even in the or even in an international event if we basically ignore Lockin. So group C now, and this one was the least surprising ones, I'll be honest. 2-1 victory for G2 Esports against Crew Esports. No surprises there. 39 on Icebox for Crew, 39 um, and 39 as well on Sunset, and 311 on Ascent for G2. I think John uh, actually speaking of Jonah P, I think he got an ace as well on Sunset, I believe. So great job by Jonah P as he got MVP for that match. Now, the EG versus G2, this was the first time ever that we actually got to see the new EG roster. And I think I said this in my in my predictions video, they are going to be really good. Like, you may sleep on this team, but remember who's the coach? Potter. Remember who's the only player who's, who's staying? Jogma. They've added Derek, which we know he can actually be really, really good if he, if he has the right resources around him. They have, who, who has that, that nature. Uh, Superman is being is being crazy, um, and Apoth as well, who actually kind of surprised me here. But super, but, but, but speaking of Superman, he he was MVP on this match. 15-13 on Sunset, 13-11 on Icebox. Still a very very close game though. Either way, for EG and the the side of the match to see he would make it to the play-ins. It was G2 Esports being and Crew Esports once again. 13-8 on both Split and Sunset. And it was Leaf getting MVP. Chamber also being used. I'm guessing that's by Kaznet. I mean, who else? could use chamber other than Kesnet. So here is what the match looked like as we get into the planes. We have MIBL versus Sentinels first and MIBL versus G2 and the big one, the big rivalry of Sentinels versus G2 Esports. That is not a coincidence. Um, I think that's just pure luck. Sentinels versus G2 will be the final round and if these two have won their both matches against MIBL, who I think might be the weakest, but they could actually maybe put up a fight, especially maybe against G2 Esports, then this match is going to be a must watch, especially not only with the rivalry with the orgs, but also who is going to 
possibly make it to Master Madrid and who is going to end their life. Well, I won't say that, but like, basically just not make it to Master Madrid or basically has no chance to make it to Master's, Master Madrid at all. So now I would like you now guys to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me, especially on this channel. I'll, and once again, so well, just like in my EMEA and my Pacific ones, I'll be posting up my plans, pickems, as well on my YouTube community page. So check it out there. So that's really about it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Catch you guys all next time in the next one. Goodbye.